Hey guys, it's Cynthia and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm doing a small oil study as part of the planning process for a larger painting. And this is something that I sometimes like to do to try to identify and iron out some of the challenges that I might have when I'm working on the final piece. Sometimes even with a lot of thumbnails and good reference, there are still unknowns. So I'll talk a little bit about how this study is helping me work through those. And then I want to get into answering some more of your questions from my previous videos. This isn't going to be a tutorial, we're going to keep it extra casual, so feel free to do some sketching while the video's on, or relax and work on one of your own paintings while we just sort of hang out together in the studio today. My goal with the larger painting that I have in mind is to express the idea of getting stuck inside your head with your memories. And in the metaphor that I chose, the memories are represented by large gray statues. And then there's a main character sort of playing the role of the viewer's analog, who's visually trapped by elements of the composition, while also feeling connected somehow to the statues. She's connected to and trapped by her memories. So the first challenge that I'm working through is getting a feel for the palette. I'm planning for this to be a relatively dark piece overall with a lot of neutrals. It's a palette I've used a lot before, uh, particularly in my digital paintings, and I want to make sure that I can control my color temperatures and my values just as well in oil. And maybe more importantly, this study is a small section cropped from the final composition at a one-to-one -one scale. So this is exactly the size that my character is going to be in the final 18 by 24 inch piece, where there will be just a lot more going on around her in the composition. And I've struggled in the past painting fine detail at this scale, so I want to see if I can capture the correct amount of emotionality and detail that I want at this size, or if I should maybe scale up to a larger work surface at final. Now this single passage won't answer all of the questions I have left in the planning process, but it'll really help me knock down a couple barriers. And speaking of larger work, I'll be working up the final on a new bigger easel. This is my new Richeson Dolce H-Frame easel that I got from Blick Art Supply, and it's something that I've had my eye on for a while. It's going to make it easier to tackle some larger paintings and help me film them for the channel. But since I'm still working small for today, I'll be using my trusty travel sidekick, the Sienna Craftec Pushad box, and a 5 by 7 inch tinted gessoed hardboard panel. I'll post my palette up on the screen for you. This is a six color subset of the palette that I typically use for studies, and it's based on what I think I'll need for the larger piece. And for my medium, I'm using the only thing that gives you a greater return than your taxes, otherwise known as liquid. So while the study's time lapsing on the screen, let's get to some of your questions. This was left blank asks, how do you deal with success, especially if you don't think you should have it? Well, that's a good question. And I don't know that many artists who feel 100% comfortable with success. <laughs> like feeling undeserving of success is sometimes called imposter syndrome. And if you suffer from it, you might feel like you should turn down a job or not give a lecture that you were invited to do or something like that because you don't feel worthy or like you're at a high enough level. But the truth is that you probably wouldn't be getting asked to do it if someone didn't think you were a good choice. And I think some of us have a tendency to set a really high bar for ourselves and think that being ready is the equivalent of being the best. Like maybe you're suddenly in a position where people are starting to look up to you and you don't feel like somebody who's still learning or makes mistakes is ready to be anyone's role model. But that's just not true. And it's really important to recognize that nobody knows everything and everyone has flaws. And if people are seeking you out, it probably means you have something of value to offer, even if you can't see it yet. Success can be overwhelming in other ways too, and I think one of the harder things to learn is how to say no to things that aren't worth your time. And there's kind of a, a recognition threshold, you might call it, and once you cross it, there's just no keeping up with everything you're going to be asked to do. 
and that absolutely will disappoint people. So coming to terms with that early and finding ways to be available when you can without it becoming a burden on either your painting or your personal life is a really important part of dealing with success. But I think my best advice here, and even if you're still just at a point where you're trying to get people to notice you, is to think ahead to what you're gonna do with success once you have it. Because success is ultimately an amplifier for your thoughts and ideas. So having a plan can alleviate some of that anxiety and that uncertainty about whether or not you're ready. You know, are you gonna be an egotistical curmudgeon and hoard your success? Or are you gonna use that spotlight to try to do something good, inspire other people, or change people's minds somehow? Are there certain things you've learned from others along the way that you can pinpoint and try to pass on as a way to say thank you? You know, it's ultimately up to you how you wanna use it. And lastly, if success finds you, stay humble, but don't stop yourself from enjoying it. Timothy Thomas has kind of a multi-part question. He says, how do you decide a piece that you're working on has a weak concept? That's a very good question. And he also asks, do you thumbnail a piece before full on painting it? If yes, how much time do you spend thumbnailing? And should you keep thumbnailing until the piece feels strong, or should you just run with the strongest concept after a couple sketching sessions? So let's start with concepts. Um, figuring out if my concept is strong uh, mostly comes down to whether or not I can look at my thumbnails or my sketch and answer key questions about it. Like, what's the story? Who are my characters and where's the focus? And there can be plenty of other questions beyond that, like, have I chosen an appropriate metaphor for the idea that I'm trying to get across? Are important relationships between characters clear? Or is the action happening in the piece readable? You know, at some point during my life, uh, I've had to really consciously ask myself those things, almost like doing an inspection on a car and going down the checklist. But the more you do it, the more it becomes like a subroutine. And you start to consider all those questions simultaneously from the minute you start. And I do do thumbnails, and I think it is a good idea to keep thumbnailing until you hit on something that feels right. But the number that you'll need to do is going to vary from piece to piece. Sometimes I go into it with a really clear vision in my head of what I want, and thumbnailing is more about working out finer details or gut checking. And other times, those little sketches are helping me arrive at the idea from zero. Yeah, I did a planning process video on an Alice in Wonderland digital painting last year that goes more in depth into that concept crafting. And I recommend going to watch that if you're curious about my particular thumbnail process. Last question, the Misanthrope channel asks, how do you know when you're good enough? Now, I would love a little more clarity on that, and I would counter by asking, good enough to what? Good enough to support yourself on artist income, or win fans, or work for a specific client? Knowing your goals certainly helps, uh, which is why that's the first question I always ask an artist during a portfolio review. It's some version of what are you looking to do with your work? And sometimes we overthink things or get too narrowly focused on something and really can't see the big picture of how good or bad our work is. I know I've certainly been there. And that's where asking someone else for feedback becomes really helpful. It's really beneficial to get fresh eyes on your work. Another thing you can do is to put your work in a lineup with work from other people who are kind of where you want to be and see how it looks, see how it feels and whether the quality matches up. I know in the past I've talked about the benefits of comparing your work to your own previous work rather than to others. And I think some folks took that out of context. So let me clarify. In that instance, I was speaking more about tracking your growth and not expecting to wake up tomorrow being John Singer Sargent or whoever your hero happens to be. But A, B, comparing your work to others to get a read on your current skill level is actually a really useful tool in this scenario. 
And sometimes it's just an intuition, like it's just a feeling. I've noticed that sometimes when I'm rounding the bend on a piece that's going particularly well, I get a little shiver in the back of my neck. It's a really strange, strange sensation. I don't know if I'm the only one or not. But one of the stretch goals that I have for this channel is to hopefully share some insights and techniques that you can use to get more confident and comfortable critiquing your own work. Things like knowing what questions to ask yourself. Because self-assessment is a very good skill to possess on top of being comfortable asking others for feedback. And the other answer to the question is that we should all be shooting for better than good enough. <laughs> I know some folks who get to a certain skill level or they figure out one gimmick that sells really well and they're comfortable just doing that forever. Now, I respect that everyone's different and I know that that's not the person I am at all. So I would encourage everyone to look at their artistic growth as a journey that doesn't have a definitive end. There is no, you know, good enough, let's stop here, but it's more like a constant evolution. And to be aware that there's always more to learn, regardless of how good you are right now. So thanks for your questions, guys. And if you do have a question, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section, and I'll try to get to it in a future video. So what have I learned from doing this study today? I already knew going into it that I need to shoot some better reference for all of the hands. There are a lot of hands on the statues in this piece, and this was certainly just confirmation of that. Part of the composite that I'm working off of is actually an older oil painting that I did two years ago, and the shapes are just not quite accurate or what I want here. So I've already got a coworker who's agreed to do some hand modeling for me this week. I've also decided that I'm definitely gonna sand down the layers of gesso when I prep the final board. I am super lazy with these little practice boards and I don't bother to sand out any of the brush texture. And I noticed that I was fighting against that more than I wanted to be when I was trying to put detail in the face especially. So those are things to correct for, but on the positive side, I'm feeling a little more confident that I can get the right emotional quality in the face at this size, but I'll probably need to finish with smaller brushes on the second or third layer of paint. Now I only went down to a number two sized brush here for this, so I'll try a one or a zero, and I could even try that out on top of this study when it dries if I want to. And I'm feeling very confident that I can handle the color and value I want. I think I got just the right temperature in the cool grays. I'm super happy about that. By mixing in some Prussian blue and a teeny bit of alizarin crimson. And I can take that knowledge with me to the final painting. So I'm going to wrap this up for today. And thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for being patient, waiting for more videos to come out while work is still in crunch mode. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee and keep planning out this painting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.